80s Wrestling Con continuing here in Freehold, New Jersey. I play America with, of course, the legendary jump in Jim Bronzel right here in Freehold. And uh, Jim, got to ask you right out of the gate, this event, second one ever, how yep. special is this? Well, it's very special. You know, uh, Brian and I have been out of wrestling now 30 years, and it's a, a great uh, event to come and see our old buddies, our old co-workers, and at the same time, see so many fans uh, that put, uh, you know, butter on our bread, you know, for so many years. And also, it's a special treat for me to come to Freehold because it's Bruce's hometown, That's you know. Right. Yeah. So I, I yes, uh, so special that way. But you know, it's always good to come out, and uh, you know, the wrestling product has changed quite a bit in the last oh, you know, 20 years, and uh, it's just not the same, but. Uh, the, the fans are still real, you know, gun ho so that's all that counts. Right. That's all it does. And, and Jim, obviously, today we got the Killer Bees yes. merchandise out, of course, with Brian Blair and things like that. Oh, a special book as well. Yes, nice cool book. Yes, Matt Matt here by yes. Jumpin' Jim Bronzel. Nice book. You can get, uh, for, where, where can we get the book? Uh, you can get it online at a company called Blurb, B-L-U-R-B. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, fans will see that for sure. And I wanted to ask you in particular, the AWA, uh, without the AWA, history certainly would not have been the same. Vern Gagne, the legend, right. and going through the training camps. Well, go back to that. And you, if you look at the training camp that I was in in 1972, it was Ken Patera, who did wow. extremely well, Kazro Vaziri, who was the Iron Sheik, who did yep. very well, Rick, the Nature Boy Flair, who did extremely well, yeah. Greg Gagne, my partner, myself, and Bob Bruggers, who was a great football player and wound up getting in a plane accident in Charlotte and um, broke his back and never wrestled again. But we had a great group. It was hard. Uh, AWA, I, where I broke in, was uh, just loaded with some of the best talent. And, you know, before New York, there was 26 different territories you could wrestle in. Now there's only two, you know, and, along with the independents. So... Uh, you know, things have progressed, like I said before. Uh, probably the best thing now that is happening in pro wrestling is the fellows are making some really decent living, so right. that's great. Boy, and Jim, those camps, what was the hardest thing you had to do? We well, hear the stories. You hear about them run up the stairs, things yeah. like that. I mean, well, what was the I, The hardest thing was when Billy Robinson used to come and stretch us. And <laughs> Billy Robinson was a British heavyweight champion, yeah. and he... He knew all the submission holds, and you know he just—he was uh, a little bit of a sadist. So, and he and he had fun with us at our expense. <laughs> and uh, Jim, also real quickly, here at 80s Wrestling Con, Freehold, New Jersey, home of the boss, yes. is uh, talk about Vern Gagne. Vern, such an icon and legend in this industry. Well, he was. He was a great amateur wrestler. You know, was a four-time Big Ten champion, a couple times national champion. Uh, uh, was an alternate on the wrestling uh, Olympics, and he was a, 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 a hell, heck of a, a torchbearer for pro wrestling for for 30 years. He trained a lot of guys, uh, set an excellent example in the ring for what he wanted as, to show his professional wrestling, and that was the athleticism and uh, background and athletic ability of the guys. Last quick question, of course, the Killer Bees. Yes. What perhaps you're best known for in your career, you and Brian Blair, be Brian Blair and the buzz with the, the wings right. and stuff. How did this come about, and how special was that run for you guys? Well, you know, when you go to New York after coming, he came from Florida, I came from uh, Minnesota. Uh, it was a great opportunity. There were 60 guys in the territory at that time, and there was three towns they ran every night. And the Killer Bees were just part of, uh, you know, a, an effort trying to uh, do what Vince McMahon did was, and, it, and really the reality of the WWE or the WWF was that Hulk Hogan was the Golden Goose. Without him, it couldn't have happened. So uh, we owe a lot to him, and, and we just sort of filled in when we needed to. And uh, there was a lot of talent there. It was a great opportunity, great experience, great exposure. And, and it was just uh, the, 
I guess you'd say the end of a, a great career for me. Right, and, uh, and Jim, this is the final question for sure, is tag team wrestling is so different. We talked to Demolition earlier today. Uh, we talked to some others that were in tag teams today. What needs to change with it? Will ever be the same again? That was such a fever pitch time for wrestling, but also tag teams. Well, <clears throat> tag team wrestling tells a story and then uh, the bad guys or the heels take advantage. Uh, but the only problem is now nobody's, nobody will uh, succumb to a weakness. Everybody's just is tough, so everybody's a heel. So you don't get any sympathy with the crowd, so you can't build that, that big crescendo in the match when there's a hot tag. It, it doesn't happen, so that's, that's the problem, and I, I don't think there's that much emphasis on tag team wrestling now, so. And hopefully there will be a change in the future. Okay. Tough and Jim Bontel, look at us, get his book right here. Thank Check you. out that website. Jim, thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank Jim Bronzel here at Eddie's Wrestling Con.